this gorgeous device right here is one of my power cubes. Uh, this is a high current adjustable power supply which was repurposed from the tube power supply of an old analog TV transmitter. In short, it's a switch mode power supply which is isolated from the grid by a big primary side isolation transformer and this thing will happily put out about 40 amps of current anywhere from 3 volts up to 15 or so. Uh, and uh, I've intended to use these for testing stuff like cheap Chinese audio amplifiers, but they do have an issue. Uh, these power supplies are uh, built around an Ericsson power brick. It's a very high-end device, uh, but it uh, does not quite perform too well in the noise department. Uh, these have a ripple voltage at idle of almost a volt peak to peak if you want to take a very pessimistic measurement and that is enough to cause noise to couple through from the power input to the output of whatever device is under test. And uh, it's a shame because I have put quite a bit of effort into making these good adjustable power supplies and I want to be able to use them as such. So today I figured we'd give that a go. So I have here removed the power module out of this one. Uh, the modules are rather modified. I've done a fair bit of jumper wiring on them in order to make them adjustable and cross compatible. I've got two of the chassis and about four of the power modules. Uh, they're cooled by an Arctic F12 TC fan which is running automatically, uh, revving up as the heatsink heats up. Uh, however, as you may be able to tell, I haven't replaced the capacitors in these and I'm thinking that might be a part of the issue because these are very high hour units. They've been in service, of course, since the, since the TV transmitter was not just sitting on the shelf, it was actually broadcasting TV back in the day and they've probably seen about 100,000 hours of use. Uh, and, and while I would think that these caps do measure quite well, I'm thinking perhaps they weren't sized for very low ripple performance uh, and uh, perhaps by replacing these with uh, more modern equivalents we can achieve some better performance. If all that fails uh, we need to consider other routes, uh, we can add capacitors to the backplane and we can try and add various chokes in series with the output. However, since this is such a high current device, uh, adding chokes to the output really is uh, uh, a bit of a bother because you need a choke that's capable of handling almost 50 amps. But uh, let's start by replacing the caps and see if we can gain some performance out of that. So if we have a look at the original caps installed in this unit, uh, they are Chemicon uh, SME capacitors which are pretty much a standard issue industrial caps. They are very high quality and uh, they are certainly reliable but they are not rated for very high ripple currents. These are the kind of capacitor you would normally put in a linear power supply. And uh, the best data sheet I've found doesn't even specify the internal resistance nor the ripple current capability. So we do have every reason to suspect that these might not be able to quite quench the high current spikes which are put out by this uh, switch mode power supply. So with that in mind, I'm of course not going to use similarly low spec caps in order to replace them. Uh, the caps I'm using are Nichicon PW and PS series and I'm going to use a variety of ranges. The reason for that being that different capacitors have different frequency responses, so a smaller cap is going to be better at handling quick high frequency spikes than a bigger one, whereas we also need some bulk capacitance. And I'm also going to add two 0.1 microfarad and 1.22 microfarad capacitors uh, just in order to even better increase the high frequency filtering capability. In order to replace the big ROE branded capacitor uh, I'm going to use a 1000 microfarad uh, Panasonic FM series which is a very high spec capacitor rated for use in uh, pretty hardcore switch mode power supplies. There is also an issue with a layout of the board with regards to the big ROE capacitor because you can see on the underside there that uh, they've actually uh, basically cut a very long lead in order to make it actually reach the output of a power supply. Uh, it's a board layout issue 
And in a linear pay supply, that wouldn't be a big deal. But in one of these high frequency, high current pay supplies, that could potentially harm the performance of a capacitor quite severely. So we're going to try and remedy that if it's possible to drill a new hole in the PCB without ruining everything. And there we go, all the new caps are installed. It went very smoothly indeed, even though the board is such heavy stock due to the huge amounts of copper required to carry the 50 amps that it was a bit of a bother to solder. I had to use two soldering irons to get to all components eight. But beyond that, everything went smoothly and the new caps are in place. I didn't have to drill a new hole for the new one face and microfarad cap either, I could just kind of reuse a couple of holes used by a previously unpopulated component. And that has the added advantage of bringing the one face and microfarad cap even closer to the 8 boot rails since it is negating a bit of extra track which was originally put in place. So we've got all the parts installed, let's slide the new board into the device, power it on and see if it's made any difference. And boy has it ever, would you look at that, that's the scope turned on to the same settings as we were seeing horrible ripple with before and there's just nothing there, we're not even triggering, we're seeing less than 10 millivolts peak to peak and uh, even if we zoom all the way out and in, the, the only trace of distortion we're seeing is uh, a slight 50 millivolts peak to peak 50 hertz hum which uh, frankly I'm not even sure is coming out of the power supply itself. So this has been a tremendous success, the obvious issue has been remedied. In fact we can even turn the bandwidth limit off on the scope and it still looks cleaner than it did before. Excellent, perfect results. So now all I've got to do is modify the board that goes in the other unit because indeed I do have two of these and they have to work in series in order to power the China amplifier. So I think you're know, later tonight we're gonna have a pretty good quality 5 to 30 volt 44 amp power supply at our disposal. And moving on from this stage I chose to do a fair bit of testing on the noise output of the power supply and it did prove to be slightly higher than I really wanted it to. Uh, so I went on to add a capacitor right at the output on the front panel because most of the noise we saw was noise of rather low frequency. It's a, it's a kind of pumping noise which seems to happen when the capacitors can't quite store enough energy to keep up between the pulses. I also ended up installing bigger capacitors on the output board going from one phase in microfarads to 2200 on one unit and 3300 on the other. Uh, doing that it slightly lowered the noise floor once again, but uh, since this uh, setup really is for audio amplifier testing, I then proceeded to build a small filter made up of a choke, a couple of small ceramic capacitors and a big electrolytic capacitor to go external to the unit. Uh, there's a secondary reason to this and that is the fact that since these are two separate units the distance from the uh, positive and negative output plugs when connected in series is about 20 centimeters and my test leads are usually set up for a normal one inch banana plug setup. So it really is a bit of a cheat to not have to have ridiculous cables. But after doing all that uh, I did some more testing this time with a Chinese amplifier. A Shure Electronics model had to be the guinea pig and I compared it to an old laptop AC adapter as well as my TTI EX752M power supply which is a much more proper switch mode power supply with a linear output stage as well as my ancient very ugly uh, linear power supply built around an L200 circuit about 10 years ago. And uh, while the winner of the low noise competition is the old linear power supply since it has no switching noise at all and it doesn't even have a ground connection. I am quite satisfied with the result. Uh, the power cubes have an output ripple of uh, less than 40 millivolts under any load circumstances and I think that is excellent compared to the output of your average laptop power brick which is uh, common to be used with one, one of these power amplifiers. Uh, 
it really is considerably better. They tend to have a huge uh, inductive spike every time the trans transistors switch, and uh, they generally just don't provide very good output. So for the purposes of testing these Chinese amplifiers, I think we really have created a rather useful solution in this. Well, I was hoping to achieve a slightly lower noise figure than we actually did end up with. I was hoping for about 10 millivolts or so. Uh, this certainly isn't bad. Uh, for a 44 amp capable power supply, I'm not going to complain because you could definitely do a lot worse. So I do suppose that's about it for this project. We've taken a couple of uh, space supplies which really have been just sitting around due to their noise and turned them into something I can actually use to produce reviews, which is just, well, excellent because these guys take up a lot of space underneath the bench and I'd really rather not see them go to waste. So I'm gonna have to thank you for watching and hopefully this is gonna lead to me bothering to do some more uh, cheapo Chinese audio amp reviews because of one of the big reasons I've been holding off on those is that I just haven't had a very good suitable power supply for it, which indeed I now do. So, take care. Cheerio.